Yes, so I'm getting matured with age, so the people are coming out. So we, we thank you for joining. Uh, we're having 92 people listening to me right away. So we don't have a topic. We don't have anything to say, as God may say. So we want to talk about the random stuff that is going on around the world. And I uh, want to say glory to God for all he has done. And... Uh, how would I put it? The world is changing every day. It is for we to change as the world is changing every day. Uh, because every day, many people, thanks so much, Pastor, uh, many people are getting into trouble, many people are dying, many people are struggling. So as the world is changing, we ought to change with the world but remain it the same with his word. Uh, so, yeah, okay. Oh, you know, okay, thank you. I, I thought I'm the ugliest person that came this evening. <laughs> so it is time for we to change our phrase, the way we approach life and the way life also approaches. us. Life will not give you what you want until you hunt what you want. It's, it's, <laughs> Somebody say pimpu is an evidence of good living. Oh wow, that you're eating a lot of uh, granite oil. Yeah, so that's it. So life is changing, and it's time for we to change with life. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. For whosoever believeth shall not die, but have everlasting life. Do you remember that scripture? I think you should think about it, and I think you should change from your old habit and get into a new season a new season is not about money coming in no or things happening no a new season is changing your character to the best part that you want to change because the life is really changing every day things are changing every day things are changing so we ought to change with those things because God will not change for us. We are the one to change for God. Are you single? Are you married? It's time for you to change your approach towards life. What do I mean? In the place of, of positivity, uh, in the place of being positive in life, in the, in the place of haunting those things, it is, that is good. It's time for we to stop separating ourselves from people who are dying slowly. It is time for we to reach out to those people. Jesus was found with armed robbers, kidnappers, prostitutes. And all. The worst part was that Jesus was even more close to prostitutes. But we are so perfect and holy that we run away from a lot of people that we have to change. Thank you so much, Philip. Uh, Philip is in Port Harcourt, one of the greatest uh, blogger in Nigeria. Uh, so he came to see this young boy. So I thank you, sir, for coming to see me. I appreciate your welcome. So uh, we want to talk about that part where we should go into the world and talk about Jesus. We should go into the club and talk about Jesus. We should go to the armed robbery center to talk about Jesus. We should go to the place to talk about Jesus. The Bible said the wicked, who are the wicked people? The world. The world is so wicked. We as you and I, we are wicked. Stop hiding under the umbrella of grace. and say, oh, I, by the grace of God, I'm not wicked. You are wicked. Can I tell you why you are wicked? You have never reached out to someone out there. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You have never reached out to someone. Reach out to someone. The righteousness of God is the good things you have done. The fruitfulness, the fruitfulness, the fruit of the Spirit is the goodness, the kindness that you have shown. It is not the perfection. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There are people you need to, yeah, you say you need to, yeah, I will be in the club by next week, Sunday. I will be clubbing by next week, Sunday. I'm going there to tell people about Jesus. Of course, I'm going to have a seat and sit with people. And I say, I know we're in the club. Hey, we're going to rock it. Yeah. 
yeah. And I'm going to tell them about Jesus. I've been doing it. It's not that it's the first time. If you come, I will tell you the same that will be. I'll be there. Yeah. So you come there. That's where you should talk about Jesus. That's where you should talk about them. It's not from church to church. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Don't go to preach to people in their various churches. I say, join our church. No. The church is not cultism. It is loveism. Uh, you understand? Not cultism, but loveism. Because every time you want to know. Let's go to those... Let's go to those bad clubs, those places they have strippers. In Port Harcourt, they have a place called Okabik. I used to be a DJ there. I used to be a DJ in Okabik where they play with a lot of naked girls dancing there years ago. It's close to it's close to ten years now that I, I played there as a DJ. Strippers, they are clubs, they play as a stripper. So I've seen a whole lot of naked people over there as a DJ. There's a lot of people dying in that place. There is a lot of people. Why the church is also wild in the way time. Why the church is busy building mansions, putting ACs in their churches, putting um, international things in their churches. Why people are, are slumbering, dying. So it is time for we to grow our spirituality in the place. The Bible said it's, it, the one or anyone who in the soul is wise. You understand what I'm saying? That is what we should do. That's the most important thing. I don't know what I will use my money to do. Today God blesses me with 5 million, 10 million. It's for charity. What am I building big house for? What will I leave it to do what? Aha. You live in a big building, but people are dying in depression. You know, I spoke about the death of Mubad is going to commit suicide. Now, in this whole thing, you are fighting for justice for, for Mubad. What about other people that are out there that are looking for justice, that are fighting for you to help them, for them to even survive? You haven't fought for them. You are waiting for them to commit suicide so that you can investigate them. To know how they died it's hypocrites we are full of hypocrisy in this africa precisely in this nigeria and more in this christianity we are full of hypocrites a lot of hypocrites i'm not saying i'm exempted we are all hypocrites you don't look for people when they are depressed you don't look for people when they are hungry you don't look for people when they are asking of help you only want to judge them. It's a problem to us. Christians, we should wake up. We only want to judge things that are not significant and leave those things that are significant for we to talk about. Are you understanding me? What about that lady that cannot pay school fees? Have we, have we contributed money for she to pay school fees? If she now sleeps with your husband, you will not judge her. Oh, Ashawo, 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 Ashawo. No, before you call her Ashawo, she needed help. But you ignored her. Every Sunday, pastors, they preach in the church. And they say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus cannot be Lord without you practicalizing Jesus as a Lord. God is good. God will never be good until you step down from your pulpit and go into the streets and do those good things Jesus wants you to go and do. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It's as simple as that. They sent me the iPhone 15 from the United States of America. Then custom held it. I didn't know if custom wants to take it. An iPhone that is $1,800 in American money. Then the custom evaluated it to $2,500. And they said, I'm going to pay for, for the custom duty or whatever it costs for, five, for 508000 naira. Why will I pay for so much money? It is because it is corruption. It is because you are angry. It's because of jealousy. It's because of pain. It's because of dubious life. 
we are all corrupt in different angles. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is good. So when you keep to say, this man is a good man, what makes him good? Preaching the word of God does not make you good. No. Nah. Preaching God's word does not make you good. Can I tell you what makes you good? Is by going to tell somebody, have you eaten? And the person say no. And you bring that money from your pocket and feed the person. Then after feeding the person, you cannot tell the person, Jesus is good. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You now tell people, Jesus is good. That's how it works. Okay. I took my mom two days ago to buy her human hair because somebody just dashed me money I never expected. And she said, Abel, you didn't buy me my birthday gift. I said, but my, my, my partners, everybody did. He said, no, that's you. But I want to buy. How are you, my son, did you buy for me? I said, mommy, am, am I your boyfriend? She, she, said, <laughs> and she, she said, that's your business. <laughs> and, I, and I called her and I took her out for a surprise. We went there to buy the human hair. Is it? Okay. I think it's, I negotiated with human hair, it was so expensive. So I started begging her for bone straight. And when she was checking this bone straight and trying to make it look like it's beautiful, and I was like, but your husband it won't like this color. She said, husband, how? So now, if I wear a, a, a red color, so they call that um, color, that is kind of red or so, something like that. Does it mean I am misbehaving? Oh, please, please, please leave that mentality and buy me the. <laughs> Are you understanding me? I refused to buy that widow until I sent the widow her monthly upkeep. I said, Mom, whatever remains, that's what I will use in buying this. And if it's not up to, it's up to you. But I must give to the widow before you look beautiful. I must look for somebody whose hunger is very high to feed. And I'm like, but you, but you claim you love me. Uh -huh. But I also love the widow. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I don't know which one is book good. <laughs> so I have to send the money to a widow for her feeling fee before I can buy my mom that bone straight. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Every day of my life, if I do not give someone joy, I'm not happy. If I do not pass something, it's not about prayer. You can pray as long as you want to pray. Believe me, you will struggle until you understand the key where God is giving to you. Are you an intercessor? You are not, right? Then look for the things God will bless you with. I'm not an intercessor. Not, not that I don't pray for people. But I pray for people. I'm an intercessor, but that is not the office God called me. I know my office now. So since I know my office, I'm using my office as an advantage to reach out to people. That's the most important thing. Life is not about buying house. Life is not about buying cars. Life is not about looking good. Life is about changing life. Life is about making impact. That's life. Imagine me have the kind of money Apostle Suleiman have. Imagine me having the kind of money Hubert Angel, Prophet Angel, or Hubert Angel have. Imagine the kind of money that Paul and Nature have, that I have. Imagine the kind of money we have that, I, that I'm going to have. I'm going to have more than that. I bet you every day Every single day, nobody will live in the street. Nobody will beg for food. I'm going to buy the private jet. I'm going to build a mansion. But believe me, I will not join my family to live in the mansion. I will live in that house that will remind me that life is not about houses. Life is not about cars. Life is not about being famous. Life is about being relevant. Are you relevant in your days? Are you understanding me? Are you relevant? You are not. 
then you have to go back and be relevant. I'm not popular, nobody knows me, but I bet you I am relevant. Nobody knows me, I'm not popular, but I tell you I'm relevant. Do you know why I'm relevant? Whatever I speak with my mouth, it comes to pass. That is the number one sign of being relevant. That's very important. You see the whole of the election. I was one of the men of God who said, Tenebo will win, that the whole church should reduce their volume and stop shouting. That the election is not about shouting, it's about hearing God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It's not about panicking. It's about hearing God. It's not about telling people fight for their rights. No, you are, you are shouting. It's to hear God. Being relevant is more important than being popular. So houses cannot come when you are sick. Cars will not come when you are sick. Do you know what will come? Those people you have impacted. Those people you have blessed those people you have reached out are you understanding what i'm saying now by weekend there are six people that finished program in liberia and in sierra Leone. by the special grace of god i trained them in school that two years program and this is the first time i'm saying then liberia they are coming to nigeria by weekend to see me three ladies and four men Three ladies, four men, they are coming to Nigeria to see me. They have to make it as a sacrifice to come and see me. And guess what? If I see them, I would take them to one of the political personnel and say, please give them a job in this country. And they will get a job. But I didn't tell them. That's how it is. They did two, two years course. What's your impact is more important. I want to be powerful before I want to be the greatest man of God. Yeah, but now I'm not. I'm, I'm going to be the greatest man of God with relevance, with key points. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So every day you wake up in the morning, for God so loved the world, He gave only His begotten Son. So life is about giving. Before you go to the toilet, you'll be able to eat. Are you getting my point? So it is time to go out there and show love and say, Jesus is good. It's not about miracles. No. It's not about... No. It's not about financial breakthrough. No, we will never get financial breakthrough except you start from the little you have. My mom said, Abel, if you cannot share the 50 naira you have, you cannot share the love you have. That's how I knew love started. Are you understanding me? That's how it works. But apart from that, it will never work. Are you looking for financial blessings, breakthrough? Have you given? Have you looked at your clothes and say you are tired of wearing these clothes and you gave it out? Those are the most important things we should do. Are you understanding me? That's life. In the place of our relationship relationship is not about removing bra relationship is not about now i'm going down to the place of the of the worldly relationship now let me also let you know it's the relationship we are all into you and i everybody we are all into it's not about removing bra and you are targeting i say oh man if this babe come today i don't drink medicine I don't drink enough medicine. Hmm. Who we'll scatter the whole place? No. That's not relationship. The moment your mentality tells you that, it's no more a relationship. It's a setup. It's an evil plan. Now, where it becomes a relationship, it's when you have a positive mindset why the person is coming. That's not just that. Your place of understanding, our relationship these days, uh, our relationship these days in our African country, I'm not talking about Europe, I'm talking about my Africans. Our relationship have, have been disconnected because of a lot of problems. Number one problem, our relationship have been disconnected. The first one I talked about, life. 
This is not talking about our relationships. Uh, where our relationship have been disconnected is a place of miscommunication, not even communication. Miscommunication. Miscommunication. Not communication. Because communicating 24 hours still does not give you the guarantee that the relationship will last. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, the relationship aspect is in the place of communication. If you say you love people, and they say some certain things to you, when you read it, your mindset is telling you a different thing. Do not react to what your mind is telling you until you understand what you were sent. Never you say, this is what this person meant. Really? Is that how this person wants to do this situation? Fine. Let's do it that way. No. Never you read to your mindset. Read to understand. Not emotionally, but read to understand with your standard. Then before you can be able to judge relate, uh, what you have been communicated with. In the place of your discussion. That's why the Bible says study to show yourself approved. Because we are communicating every day in our relationship. But it's not bringing forth fruit. It is because one person is lacking that capacity. We need to grow in our place of capacity to help our mentality while discussing. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There are some relationships that would have blessed your life. But you miscommunicated it. There are some relationships that would have helped you, but you miscommunicated it. There are some relationships that would have taken you where you are to the next level, but you miscommunicated it. So next time, if you are talking to someone, never you assume or have the mindset of what the person is now saying. You must take your time to understand what the person is saying before you react and before you react sleep over it because it's just a mere word it's not going to kill you it's not going to spare um, something in your life it's only going to make you yeah so don't give it the focus so our relationship is also fate are you understand why oh for for the past six days we've not communicated no it is fate you can communicate because too much of everything too is bad do you know that Every, too much of everything is bad. When you speak in the morning, you talk for six hours. Are you are you guys so jobless? You don't have job? <laughs> you talk on the phone for six hours. And when you talk on the phone for six hours, before you know, familiarity comes in. And you start talking to your man anyhow. Your man start talking to you anyhow. Let it be a haunt period that you guys talk. And what is the haunt period? Haunt period could be in the evening before you guys sleeps. That's the haunt period. Like by this time you pick up the phone and say, hey baby, how was your day? What happened? Sorry we didn't speak in the morning. Are you understanding what I'm saying? How was your day? What's going on? If it's me, I will ask you, how many people toasted you today? How many did you give your number? <laughs> how many people did you promise that you will go out for lunch? These are the parts. That is the haunt time. Not in the morning, not in the afternoon. Not a good communication is not 24 hours. A good communication is one minute and something very tangible to talk about. That's the most important thing. So we as youth, our relationships are not going well and not doing well. Are you understanding what I'm saying? No man wants a negative woman. And no woman wants a negative man. Both of you must come to the terms of understanding. That's the more important thing. Understanding is what moves everybody forward. Our communication should be better. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So we should try to communicate. Try to talk everything. Now, in the part of this place called prophecy before marriage, it doesn't work. There is nothing like prophecy. I can see that this man is your true husband. It doesn't work. I have seen God's choice before divorce. I've seen God's choice for both people. They divorce. I have seen God's choice divorce. Do you know why? They lack the principle. Lack the principle to stay in the relationship. It is because they don't have 
what it takes, which is the principle, which is the understanding. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Which is the understanding and which is the principle. So it is time for we to come to that part that marriage is not prophecy. Marriage is a relationship, is by conviction. And what is the most important conviction we need as, as people is that I can take care of you even when I don't have it. That's the conviction. I am not stingy when it comes to you. That's conviction. Conviction does not come with perfection. It comes with issues. Now, how do you guys settle? The person you are in a relationship, does he easily say, I'm sorry? Does she easily say, I'm sorry? That's the convention. The convention is not praying morning and night and not having the attitude, not having the good character. You can be spiritually high and mentally poor. You understand? You can be a good prayer warrior, but you are not, you are not good in relationship. It's not prayer that will help you. It is by bringing down your prayer armor and be humble and follow the principles. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So conviction have to do with, I am sorry. Arguing day and night does not qualify both of you to even marry. Even when both of you are arguing, there is a problem. One person must submit. A man can submit because he loves a woman. But before he marries her, he should be sure that he's the one now submitting. She's the one now submitting. Are you understanding me? The Western world is good, but not every culture you bring to your relationship, it will damage it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The Western culture of their relationship is very nice, but not all of them you should bring to your relationship. Our forefathers have been married to three people, no divorce till they, they even live longer. But you and I and other people who are intending that is going for one wife, one wife is bringing more problem. Why is one wife bringing more problem than in the days where three wives were peaceful with the man? Even though it's not peaceful, at least the man stays up till 80 years, 90 years. But in our generation, a relationship or a marriage, I have seen a marriage who only lasted for five days. That is why they say, do not spend millions for your wedding. Spend the millions in your anniversaries because your anniversaries of celebration is what gives you the thanksgiving to say, God, thank you. Me and this stubborn man, we have stayed for 10 years. Church in a K. Glory to God. Oh, let me celebrate. Not one year at the beginning. It doesn't work. It's not a guarantee. You're not doing a wedding of 20 million naira, hundred thousand dollars. That's nonsense. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Either the kids suffer in polygamous, that's not what we are saying. We are only saying the men in those days, they live longer. Marrying three wives, they live longer than these ones that see one wife, they live shorter and they divorce. The divorce rate is high. It is because of miscommunication. So it is not about, you don't prophesy marriage. The only time you prophesy marriage is the set time. You only prophesy the set time, but not the gender, not the type of the gender, not the character of the gender. Everybody have a mistake. Not the listed. When it comes to that part of relationship, try not to spiritualize it. Oh, this man can pray for 24 hours. Can pray. That's not husband material. A man who prays for 24 hours, who told you is a husband material? That's not a husband material. A husband material at the ending of the day, at least before he sleeps, if he has pride too much, people like me, I will just tell you, I'll tell you, oh, in your mind now you think you have sales. 
not every man i've never seen my father apologize but he comes through through techniques that's how they apologize so you should know when your man is apologizing he might he might he might not come to say i'm sorry it is when he comes through those corner and you trying to like leave me alone don't bother me i think you finished the whole day you didn't talk to me it's not you're coming to talk to me he's well he's well well maybe you are toasting women that's why you didn't bother me like ah, ah, which we are talking another thing now you're accusing me of another thing is is because of that thing it's okay i'm sorry now let it go. How far where are you? Won't you come to the house? Come and do what for what? Come and do what it's okay. I'm sorry now. Let it go. You have settled the relationship. But where pride comes in like you just ignore. It's not good. Twenty four hours prayer warrior is not a wife qualification. Don't be deceived by spirituality. Ah, if it comes with a package, ah, that's a gift. But if it doesn't come with it, it does not mean she's not qualified to be your wife. Are you understanding me? That is it. So so many Christians have gotten it wrong that because this girl is not speaking in tongues, she's not powerful. That's nonsense. Most of these women who speak in tongues are cheaters. Most of these women who even see visions are cheaters. Are you understanding me? Most of these people who does not even have time to go to church most times and most of them are the faithful people. Are you understanding me? Most of them are the faithful people. So when you so much spiritualize on certain things, it doesn't qualify. You know why? I'll tell you why it doesn't qualify. It doesn't qualify. Now, a woman who is very good and not spiritual, you decided to leave her for someone who is more spiritual. The one who is spiritual can be very stubborn than the so-called one who is said is spiritual. I come again. The one who is spiritual can be stubborn, very stubborn, disobedient, rebellious spirit. The one who is not even spiritual is very obedient. All you need to do is teach her, put her in the line. When you have stoned, it's not a must. Must you call a prophet as if you're a pastor? No, she's a wife. That is why the Bible said, Do not marry a pastor, marry a husband. The Bible said it. <laughs> so don't marry a prayer warrior, marry a wife. Don't marry a pastor, marry a husband. And let me tell you, don't marry a pretender. Who is a pretender? I've seen two cases, like two to three cases. They came to me and they're like, he's a pastor. The other one is not a pastor. God said the one that is not a pastor is preferable than the one that is a pastor. And, and I told the lady that this one that is not a pastor is the person I'm seeing peace in his heart. That is one who is a pastor. The woman said, how? I said, fine. You, you will understand what I'm saying. And they understood it. The pastor is not romantic. Nah. The pastor is not romantic. The pastor, you need a romantic man. You don't need a, you don't need a holy man. Yeah. I'm telling you. You need a romantic man. What is romantic? It's not somebody who can satisfy you three hours on bed. No, that's not romantic. At least a man who is there to fight for you is a romantic man who is ready to defend you in private with people and fight it. That's a romantic man. That's a romantic woman. Not the one who said, if you do bad thing, I will tell them you did bad thing. That's not a romantic man. That's not a romantic woman. Even when you are guilty, they protect you. That's a romantic person. They are there for you. That's being romantic. Are you understanding what I'm saying? They are not romantic. You are talking about cloud nine. Man, if we marry, ha, pastor, if we marry like this, we climb tree, we'll be climbing Jerusalem, back, 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 back. The house will be full of heat. The pastor will say, why are you so kana? Why are you so kana? That's a red flag. You discuss it in your singlehood. <laughs> eh? You discuss it with your singlehood. 
You're discussing it, you're singlehood. They don't try to pretend. There's nothing to pretend. You want to marry Corista? Will you people sing in the in the bedroom? Don't marry a chorister, marry a wife. She can sing. In marriage, there is no microphone, there is no power amp, there is no mixer, there is no keyboard. Ah, no, there is no. The only time you will see that woman sing is maybe both of you are fellowshipping together. It's finished. The other fellowship is in the bed. On the bed. That's when she sings, is the screaming. Yay! You will kill me. I love you, baby. That's the screaming. That's the sound. That's the song she will sing for you. Every other song is calm. <laughs> Discuss it. We so much get into so much pretense of relationship. Where you say, you are this, you are oppressing this, you are this, uh, which woman is this? You are looking for a right man. But you as a woman, you've not asked yourself, am I the rightful woman? That's why I don't kill myself in anything comes to women. Because when you are trying to judge me, I just snub you. I ignore you. I just ignore your foolishness. Because even asking questions is not part of it. Men can lie to you. You want to hear? Because I keep saying it. Every relationship that starts with the truth does not start. Every relationship you have found yourself started with lies and end up with the truth. Determination not made both of you to stay together, but it wasn't the truth or the lie that made it stood. Higher is determination. No relationship. Okay, let me ask you Have you ever, have you ever seen a man going to the boutique naked to buy clothes? He's naked. He went to the boutique. He bought boxers. He bought trousers. What American call pants. He wears it. He now wore clothes. Have you seen it? It's not possible. So every man knows that his relationship has ended. That is why he's talking to another woman. And you cannot buy clothes from the boutique being naked. You go to the boutique with clothes. So you must buy a clothes while you're already wearing so there is no relationship that starts with the truth. Every relationship starts with lie. No matter how it is. Because one certain time, that my father used to give me so much headache. And I went to the shop to meet my mom. I said, come, 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 come. Florence, sit down. I told the customer, go, 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 go. We need to sell again. Go, just go. The but I went to my mother. I said, you are chasing my customer. I said, mommy, you better listen to me. You better keep quiet and listen to me. If not, I will do something crazy in this house. Sit down. Let me ask you something. My mom said, <laughs> my mom said what is it? I said, sit down. I was, my mom knew that I was very angry. She sat down. She said, okay, my father, what is the problem? You want to kill me? I, I not told her. I said, Mrs. Florence. Is that man, my father? My mother said, you, you want to hear? Oh yeah, sit down. Let me tell you the story. <laughs> so my mom went for treatment. She was suffering from malaria, plus two or plus three. And my dad then was a nurse, not yet a doctor. And he was the one treating her until he now liked her and fell in love with her. Are you understanding what I'm saying? My <laughs> coat. Now, it started with lies. But when the woman found out the truth, <laughs> it was determination that I have to keep her. Well, we started it. There's no need to end it. So there is no perfect thing. That is why sometimes if most people who come out from a broken home, they are devastated. Because nobody wants to understand nobody. Let us come to the terms of knowing that your perfection is not on earth. It's in heaven. The only thing we are here is say, Father, give us our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. For goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. It's finished though. If you go to school, thank God. If you did not go, thank God. That is what we came to this world to do. You are looking for perfect person. Your age is going. So you have been so imperfect that you passed 25. You didn't marry. 
you are looking for so much perfection without looking for yourself. Because the Bible said, before you look for a perfect person, look for yourself. Before you see somebody who you fit to be great, you should be great. There are standards you are looking for. You should have those standards. There is no perfect person. The lady who comes to tell you that God showed her that this your husband is a womanizer. If you go and check her own relationship, her own husband or fiancé is worst. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Don't let people push you away from a relationship that would have blessed you. Are you understanding me? Maybe the guy didn't pay your house rent anymore. You stopped talking to him. That means you weren't real from the beginning. Okay, the guy did not buy you the clothes you asked him to buy. You walked away from him. That means you are the fake person. Oh, I want a rich man who can take care of me. What about a rich woman who can support a rich man? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Christians, we should stop acting like a gold diggers because we are acting like gold diggers. Most of us are acting gold diggers. I cannot ask anything from a woman I didn't give anything. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Anything your father cannot give to you as a lady, don't ask it from a man who is not yet your husband. Even when he's your husband, you still need to be careful. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Never you show a man that you are an independent woman. He will not marry you. That's the fact. As much as you are independent, make him feel that he is responsible. How do you make him feel he is responsible? Sir, I don't have cream. Not that I don't have the money to buy the cream. Home. You should be the one to buy me this cream. After this one finish now. Buy me the cream. Are you hearing me? My love, are you hearing what I'm saying? I know you don't have, but try. You will bring small though. Uh -huh. Bring small. If this cream finish, just know that you'll be the next person to buy me cream. Uh -huh. It is part of the responsibility. We must start practicing it now. That's how it works. Shikina. That's a responsibility. You have given him pre-information. Not like my cream has finished. Uh -uh. Is that your responsibility? Oga, my love, if my cream is finished this week, you try, you, you will try. I know it's not easy, but you will try. You say you love me, you will try. Don't impose it. Make him know you are not an independent woman. The moment you start telling a man you can pay your buy your pay your things, buy your clothes, this and this, this and this, that and this, he will be scared. Some men don't want to marry a strong woman. They want to marry a woman who can fall back at them. And it is true. No matter how your mother takes a decision, check it out. She always falls back to the husband. Hey, my children will buy it for me. My children will take care of me. But she also falls back to your father. Are you understanding me? No matter how rich you are, always fall back at him, even while you are doing for yourself. So that that sense of humor, of humility, will be seen in you. Are you getting my point? Always let him know, I cannot go forward without you, even when you can go forward. Give that man a sense of pride. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Give that man a sense of pride. Give him a sense of pride. That's what you have to do. If you don't give him a sense of pride, how will he come back home with confidence? Are you understanding what I'm saying? That's how it is. We must walk in our relationship. Walk it. Make it work. Just make it work. Stop acting like a gold digger. If he does not give you, you walk away. If he gives you, you stay. No. No. Nobody wants that kind of woman. Hmm? So let's work on that side of our relationship. As I said before, relationship is not prophetical. 
relationship is not by the man of God. Now, how even do you know if the man is real? Now, let me tell you. Sometimes we may like, oh, this man is a very gentle man. He has self-control. He has what? Self-control. Self-control is good. But they also have disadvantage. Is your man attracted to you? Take away spirituality. Is your man attracted to you? Like if he sees you, he wants to hug you. If he sees you, he wants to peck you. If he sees you, he wants to hug you. Is he attractive? Are you also attractive to him? Take away holiness. Let's take away holiness because <laughs> there's no holiness in marriage. Are you attracted to your spouse that the moment you see each other, you want to grab each other, you want to pull out your clothes, you want to even have sex? Have you guys come to that level? If you have come to that level, you are not a sinner. Now, it only takes both of you to understand that there, may, there is no sex before marriage. That's the part you respect. But the moment a man just sees you and pretends like he doesn't want to touch you, investigates him very well. There is somebody he's touching. I'm not here to be religious. Whatever you want to judge me, judge me. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? A man naturally does not stay on its own. The self-discipline is to put you close to him and give you a warm body. You, there must be a connection. Listen, the first connection is the heart connection before the waist connection. That is why women do not have sex with a man. They don't have heart connection. Most of the connection is the heart connection before the waist connection. Now, the heart connection goes with she staying on your shoulder, both of you hold together, cuddle together, stay together, hold hands together. That's the heart connection. You peck together, you hug together, you look into her eyes and you say, small girl, how are you? She look at me and say, me, small girl. She shut up, hey, small girl. Both of you laugh. There's nothing like too much of seriousness. Okay, <laughs> you must joke. Have your spouse ever called you monkey? Look at you, short girl. <laughs> That's the you guys come to that stage. You have known that you have really known yourself. That's the heart connection. When you like, you bless you something, they worry, they crazy at me. Are you crazy? If I if I if I if I slap you. You will, you will just know I love you. You've come to that level. That's reality. Not so much, uh, okay, thank you. I want to go. Oh, Father, I thank you for my... <laughs> it's a lie. It's a scam. Heart connection. That's the first stage. Then waist connection. I understand what I'm saying. Don't be deceived by when both of you come. Oh, he doesn't even hug me. He doesn't want to. Ask him question because in marriage, will he also touch you? You guys does not talk about it. Does he have a productive manhood? Talk about it though. Not when you marry. Oh, you didn't tell me. You didn't ask. You didn't tell me. It is because you are too holy, so I can't discuss it with you. You are now regretting it in marriage. Huh? Ask him, Oga. That thing that you have on that there, is it working? Of course, you should, you, should, you should just do one or two things to check it out if it's working. And self-control helps you to put it in order. Tell them I'm the bad pastor. At the end of the day, let them go to heaven. <laughs> and if they see me here fire, they should know that all these things I'm talking. It's life. Yes. Relationship is open for you to talk everything. Stop pretending. That's why that's why people who marries from this bad bad environment they met themselves. Their marriages are still long and still going and still lasting. You who is so holy, your relationship ends in 6 months. Yes, it ended because you are you pretend too much. You, we pretend. 
Our relationship are scattering. Our relationship are ending. You see two people who God knows that they are good together. In two weeks time, they are over. Because they just met a prophet who is a, who is a lungago. I call a prophet who is a lungago. The man I'm seeing is like this, like this. The man is not meant for you. Okay, who is meant for her? The, the Bible said I have created who is meant for you. We are all meant for each other. As much as Christ is involved, it is the principle that keeps us together. It is the pride that separates us from, from each other. We are all meant to be together. It is the principle that keeps us together. It is the pride that separates us. Okay, you now take a picture and be going to show a prophet. What would the prophet tell you? The one God gave to Adam. He said, the one, now the same woman where you give me, now he mess me up. From that day, God stopped giving chicks. <laughs> God stopped PIMP. If both of you are together, hey, ask him. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Ask him, or oh God, this thing, is they work? Is he working? Don't be too holy not to ask questions. Ask, is it working? And don't be a questionnaire. Every day they see you. You are asking questions. You are asking questions. Are you a host type person? When you left the other person, what made her to leave? And when she left, what did you do to her? Uh, you have a child. Yes, you have a child. Okay, what happened to the baby mama? Why did both of you? Is all those questions necessary? You Are you coming to go that you are coming to ask too much questions? I used to tell my friends around me, the moment she comes to ask you too much question, just leave her alone. Because the rightful woman comes and supports you. The one she have heard is enough. She doesn't want to hear again. Because the more you hear, the more it will be difficult for you to accept. Let the past go. It remains the past. Let's move on. But you did this one. Are you the one that did this one? Are you the one that did this one? How did she feel when you left? Did you guys communicate it? When did you? Nonsense. Nons nonsense. Why didn't you tell me who this virgin do? You as a woman, you would have also told me who this virgin do. You are not telling me uh, when you had this one. Was this one like this? It was she used to... Is she... That's nonsense. Just move on. You want the person? Move on. You don't want the person? Get out. Stop wasting people's time. Ask questions so is good, but not unnecessary questions. To ask questions is good, but don't make it nonsense. You see, that thing I told you, you see, the same way you told me about that relationship, that's the same way you are treating me now. Eh? You see, the way you are treating me now is the same way you treated your ex. So you had the information so that you can be doing what we call reverse talk. You have mental problem now. I've seen couples. I've seen couples who a prophet said, you people who are not meant to be together. And later the lady came with another man. He said, yes, this is your real husband. And the real husband the prophet claimed to be, they married. Guess what? They didn't stay for three months. They separated. So prophecy cannot hold marriage. No. Conviction is what holds it. Eh? That's it. So we should think we are adults. Eh? If a woman cannot trust you and come to your house and you don't have sex with her, then you are not worth being a husband. We should come to that place of trust because you cannot want to marry a woman and the woman will not come to your house. You are only going to be seeing the woman in the street, in the street, in the street. That's nonsense. The woman you want to marry should be able to be coming to your house. She should be free. Are you understanding what I'm saying? She should be free to come to your house without you having issues. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? The reason why God said sex before marriage is a sin. Eh? Is because... If we start having sex, we will get tired and the marriage might not work because 
we have all known our sexual styles we have all known the pattern we have all we are now familiar with the sex we are now familiar with our private parts it becomes a problem for the immature are you understanding what i'm saying that is the main reason god advised us that sex before marriage is bad because so that we don't get familiar with our sexuality so God wants us to exploit it in marriage not in relationship but as much as as much as we want to exploit it in marriage we should be able to know it in relationship yeah you can be playing you understand what I'm saying or got this thing in the work there is what we call thermometer <laughs> you just it's like that's how you check my if malaria is check it like this boom and if the thing wakes up you say chai my husband i can't wait you've known he have discussed it and you understand what i'm saying don't be looking for if you marry perfection men be scared if the man does not even touch you while you guys are in a relationship he doesn't try to make attempts maybe to touch you or try to even have sex please ask him sir is this thing working because the man must be attractive to you you think attraction is just the uh, uh, character and everything no attraction comes physically are you marrying some paper <laughs> men some men love it because their wife have big breasts they love big breasts so they go for big breasts they love it because they go for big backside they go for it they love it because it's normal they, it's just, that's just simple what are you so holy and righteous about when you know this thing you will do it? Eh? Calm down. Calm down. Let God use you. Eh? Don't kill yourself. Ask questions. Okay? Did it work? Can you satisfy me? Do you have the do you have what I'm a woman who loves satisfaction? Say it. Hmm? Say it. We are too perfect, so we don't know what is going on. And what do I also mean? And let me also teach you. God said, My son, some of the things you will be teaching in this world, they will call you a shower, they will call you playboy, they will call you a kind of name. But I allowed you to learn them <laughs> so that when as you have come into my kingdom, you will be able to teach them. And I didn't know that these are the times I would teach them. That's it. As a woman, you know when you used to be a sinner or when you used to have sex regularly with your past relationship and you decided no sex this time until you marry. Now, you are now with somebody who wants to marry you. And you know you, don't, you are not satisfied through penetration. It is what you discuss with your spouse. You don't keep it quiet. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Don't keep it quiet. Well, baby, the fact is this. Sex through penetration does not satisfy me. It does not make me come. He won't kill you. He will ask you, okay, fine, what makes you come? You guys, we talk it. You discuss it. Okay, see what makes me come. Not sex, not penetration. We should learn this thing and stop acting like Jesus. We are not, you, are, you can never, God forbid. You, be Jesus. Ta, I'd rather die. You, you can never, you can't be Jesus. Even the biggest great men of God in our country, you can never. If they were Jesus, they wouldn't have married. <laughs> they wouldn't have had children. Of course, you are not Jesus. That's why you married, you have children. Keep your imperfection story. Eh? So you come, you so much tell us how perfect you are to keep it. I don't want to hear. I want to listen to people who make mistakes so that I can learn from them. Don't tell me the glory. Tell me the story. Don't tell me the glory. Tell me the story. It is the story part I want to hear to be encouraged to get to the glory. If you tell me the glory, I will be desperate. 
I don't want to be desperate. So tell me the story so that from the story I can now climb to get to my glory. People don't want to be there with other people when they are suffering. They want to come when they are celebrating. It is too late. I want to be there when you are crying, not when you are celebrating. So that the day you are celebrating, I can come and do like this and say, give me 10 minutes, I will eat it. Everybody will know that I was there when you were crying. Don't come when they are celebrating. You came too late. Be there when they are crying. Go to people when they are shedding tears. Go and give people your trust when everybody has betrayed them. That's what makes you unique. When the Bible says, I shall make you meek. That's what he's saying. When others are betraying you, you are encouraging to help people out. Ask him, is it working? I am not satisfied through penetration. Sir, I am satisfied by head. He said, what, of, take this, cut this part, share it to the world. Let them call me bad boy. The ones who listen to it understood what I'm saying. Honey, I don't come through penetration. Do you know I learned all this? I also learned it from my father. There are books of reproduction that I learned. And some sex, you can't get pregnant until you, you orally make them wet. That's when they can get pregnant. It's in the medical book. Not all women just come through that and get pregnant. There are some that needs to be open before they can get what? Pregnant. You just go there, pa, 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 you come down. You can't even ask your spouse, are you satisfied? Did you come? That's a loving husband. Not back, back, back. You stand up. Honey, hey, what's it? I'm still feeling you. Uh, do something I don't do. I don't do. I don't tire. It is because you fail to know why she is not coming and what makes her to come. Stop spiritualizing everything. Nonsense. I said, this pastor, a bad pastor. See what you need to talk. I go talk up. You will good. What you need to talk. If they share money, or if they share Ibu, if they take in their hand, what have you shared to the society? Me, I'm sharing what I know. You share what you know. Help society. Huh? You, you go explain, no? you will explain and explain and explain, no evidence. Hmm? I stayed with my dad for over 15 years medically to see how they treat people. Uh -huh. So that's it. You know, I'm a man of God. So many people have come for counseling. I've gotten a counsel. Uh, 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 someone came for counseling. And, and, and they, were, they were, first of all, I met them in Assemblies of God. And I told the man, the reason why your wife wants to divorce you, it is because you don't satisfy her. But every people who come, they used to say, hey, you don't, yeah, you, don't, yeah, you don't take care of your wife. Okay, I'll come to question. You can ask me a question when I'm done. You see them. Oh. I told the man, you don't satisfy, you just climb, back, 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 you come down. The woman started crying. Because one, she cannot help her pastor such kind of thing. It is too holy for she to say to the pastor. And I wanted to tell the man the drugs. I wanted to tell the man the drugs to take, to help him, to enhance him, at least to stay longer. God said, no, this one is by deliverance. It's a spirit. And I laid my hand on him. He manifested. And the Lord said, let them go to their house now while the church is on. Let him go and test what he was delivered for. The wife came back and testified and said, after the deliverance, I was the one who was begging my husband, I'm tired though, I'm tired. Tito T is a champion. Don't die in silence, you will lose your family. Don't die in silence, you will lose your family. Ask for help. 
don't divorce because you found out you will also divorce the next person find out a solution are you know what i'm saying find out the solution now let me give you something don't tell anybody you are the only one hearing it there is a prominent man of god in this country who is wife cannot have sex with any man eh? until she will die there was no healing for this woman can i tell you there was a secret marriage of a young lady for this man of god is in nigeria he has big congregation i will tell you <laughs> but god told me and the wife has called me to tell me what do we do god spoke through me this one me we are doing is married to a small young girl to help him you can never hear it as a scandal because nobody knows if they don't tell you you will know so stop acting so much perfect she has been suffering for that thing for the past 30 years because this day will make it 30 years she has been suffering from it for so many years she can't have sex. I don't know why. Medically, it can't happen. It's only God that can deliver her. They have to pass her urine through another position. Huh? I've never seen such medical condition. People are going through. A well-known man of God's wife. I won't call him. So stop acting like you are. And if you see the way God is using that man, <laughs> God is using him double. You think you've heard story? I know another man of God in Ghana that his private part is dead. He has big congregation. He didn't use it for any spiritual thing. And God is helping the wife not to masturbate. She's just only believing God for his healing because it was an attack. It's over 15 years she had it. People are going through hell. Hiring. And the other part I want to talk about. He said, The man you want to marry must be walking. He must be walking, walking. <laughs> You're a thief. Walking what? It's good to walk. Home. But the moment you make it as a criteria, you are a thief. Or people say furubo. <laughs> Furu furubo. There are some preaching you don't listen to because God does not permit some certain things, no matter how they preach it. Have you heard some men of God said your husband must be working before you marry him? Let me tell you the disadvantage. Your husband might be working before you marry him. After wedding, they, they, they sack him. What will you do? Will you divorce him? Christian, have sense. You cannot always marry a working class man. You can always marry a futuristic man, not a working class. A working class today can be the poorest man of your future tomorrow. So don't say if he's not working, no marriage. No. You must see he's a hard-working man. Huh? Both of you will start up business. You say, your husband must be working. Your husband must be working. Must be working. He must have a job. You have fought you. No one that is working has come. <laughs> because the one that is working is also looking for who is working, not you who is not working. So before you want a man that owns a car, you pack your own car. Are you understand what I'm saying? He must be working through, but do not take it as the most important factor to marry him. You can marry him and he will lose his job. What will you now do? Will you divorce him? Working class men does not give you the guarantee 
that is, is a responsible man. He can be working and he doesn't take responsibility. Don't follow general prof teaching to say your husband must be working. Adam was working is a lie. There was nothing Adam was working in the <laughs> garden of what? The only thing he did was to give all of them. Who gave them names? Adam? Who gave him the wisdom to give them names? Is it not God? So what was he working? You, you are saying, I'm a servant of God. What are you? Come, you're a son of God. You're a daughter. There's nothing like servant. Since Jesus came, he said he has called you. He has made you to become sons and daughters, not servant. Change your mentality. You are not a servant. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. You are not a, what I do. Are you washing clothes for God? <laughs> yeah? Are you washing clothes for God? Okay, you are washing plate. How can you be a servant? You are not a servant. If a servant is a house boy and a housemaid, you are not a servant. You are a child of God. Until you are 101, then they can call you adult of God. Below 100, you are a child of God. Stop saying, I'm a servant of God. You are not a servant. Jesus came to make you a son. A man of God carried microphone. And, hey, you're a servant of God. You are not. Do I look like a boy boy? I'm the most laziest prophet on earth. But God still speaks to me. <laughs> Very lazy. God still speaks to me. Some of you pray more than me. <laughs> yes. You pray more than me. <laughs> but God, I hear more than you. I follow principle and pray less. You don't follow principle, you pray for hours. <laughs> Who is more better? I follow principle and pray less. You, you, you pray more and you don't follow principle. You must follow the principle so that you can pray less. <laughs> eh? They now call you servant. He said, I'm a servant of God. I said, hey, if I be a son of God, let it come to pass. Not servant. Servant what? What am I doing for God? I'm not, I'm the laziest, lousy. Is anyone the lousiest? That's why I am. Not it, not it. Not. <laughs> I'm not doing anything for God. Not it. So. My alpha before Coke came me. <laughs> you want to be for me in ice, ice, uh, ice block, man. When Coke kill you. You want to affect by British outfit. There's nothing. Are you doing anything for God? You are not doing anything. We are all sons and daughters. He said he has given you the power to make wealth. He doesn't give servant. Tell me how one house boy or one house girl that they give prosperity. They only give children. So he gave you what? His prosperity and blessing. So you're a son. He said he has made you a son and daughter. Not as made. Servant has made. I don't do anything. I wake up in the morning. I like, oh, oh, thank you, Jesus. So oh, thank you. I don't wake up. Eh, not like this. Not like this one that they do here. I don't wake up. Chai. I come at us. I say, thank you. Hey, sun they shine. I die alive. This my belly. It's still big. Okay. What did that happen now? Bafa. <laughs> Finish. We are all sons and daughters, nothing. I just don't know. I'm a servant of God. I'm a, you're a boy, boy. You are not a servant. You're a child of God. Huh? You're a child of God. You're not a servant. Change your mentality. That's why God answers prayer. When he says, Father, I'm your son. You are reminding him, are you a prodigal son? The prodigal son even refused to call himself servant. He said, if I go back, eh, 
I could not walk as a servant. He now knew the work of a servant. <laughs> Even though he rejects me, I will be a servant. So servants are manageable. But sons and daughters are not manageable. So you are not a servant. You are a daughter. You are a son. Hmm? Lastly, nothing can complete to marry. You marry with the one you have. If you are saving money to marry a woman, she, she, is, not, she is not a choice for you. You don't save to marry. You get favored to marry. Marriage is not by savings. Family is not by savings. Family is not by working. Marriage is not by savings. You get favored to marry. You don't save to marry. If you save to marry, you will walk into depression. You are favored to marry. The Bible said, whoever founded a wife, founded a good thing. As a woman, the moment he knows or you know that a man has come to knock door in your family to say he loves you, the next thing to do is to say, God, I decree, I declare, let my husband to be, find money to come back to pay my bride price. And let me tell you, marriage is not paying bride price. Marriage is a concept between father and another father, between two families. Coming to pay bride price is when you want to start having children. When Isaac want to start having children, Abraham went to pay the bride price and brought the wife home for Isaac to start production. If you don't have the money for bride price, someone else can pay your bride price for you. It is not written that the man must be the person to pay. If they love themselves and they want to be together, someone else can pay to help them to avoid fornication or whatever. Don't too much analyze things. It will lead you to paralysis. Marriage is two families knowing together. That both of you are coercing. <laughs> coming to pray, coming to pay, is to prove now you want to start having children. Because you cannot start having children when you've not paid the bride price. But concept between man and he said both of them together. That's concept. That's marriage. It's in the Bible. If you could come, I'll show you. That's marriage. Then the right is to pay the bride price. To officially say, now we can have children. <laughs> yeah. The reason why plenty people Hmm? The reason why so many of you are not married is because of too much stories. They say in Papa, they are Usu. They say this. That's not those things are nonsense. Too much of analysis. Analysis. Huh? Concept. White wedding is a white man's culture. Your culture is traditional marriage. Stop wasting money for white wedding. Even these lips, you know, my lips get dry easily. Because me, sometimes I hate drinking water. Somebody was listening to me and was listening to me. The person started complaining that why is it that I'm licking my lips? <laughs> I think you know, you know anything that we don't talk. Why is it? So... My mouth can be dry, and I'm talking. As a young man of God, you say I'm cute, right? So as much as I'm cute, I should be wetting my lips so that it don't dry because it doesn't affect me that he's talking. They also say that, why is he wetting it? Is he trying to entice women? <laughs> There's nothing they won't talk. So just carry the one you have, eh? Carry go. <laughs> God will give you the strength. The moment you pick the wife, say, God, give me the strength. 
Are you on the staff now, say? Okay, I think I close for now. <laughs> Young ladies, stop looking attractive physically and be smelling inwardly. Is the fear. You put so much fear into men. Don't let these people who are married to put fear into you who are single. He said, now fear where they give me me to a woman married like you. <laughs> I will also enjoy the good part. And the bad part, God will take it away. They are discouraging people. If feminists come to you, run, no, run, no. Say marriage is no scam. Women, stop looking clean outwardly and be smelling inwardly. It's my advice, if you like, if you like. Hmm? Stop looking good outwardly and be smelling inwardly. The moment the man hugs you, he perceives smell. <laughs> By rule on. Eh? By rule on. Good. By rule on. Put this part. Put his mist. Some women look very clean. If you see them clean, sharp, clean clothes. But your husband is suffering from smell. He cannot have sex with his wife because the moment he penetrates his wife, the friction makes the place smell. Ah, that's the worst a man can go through. A smelling wife? No. It is better to be clean inwardly and than to be dirty. Hmm? Don't wear Brazilian hair on the inside hair that is not updated. The money for Brazilian hair, use it, buy book and read. The money for Brazilian hair, use it, go to small school, go for course and understand. The money for show body, use it for something better. Don't buy Versace everywhere, shoe, belt, spray all the whole path. But the moment there is no AC, your armpit starts smelling. The moment your husband touches you, you start smelling. It's nonsense. Now allow me be the bad boy so that I can teach you. Allow me be the, is he your bad boy? Let me be the bad man so that I can teach you. Divorce happened because of a smelling woman. Why did you divorce your wife? I just, we, we are not compatible. It's a lie because of that smelling part. Your pastor can't tell you he's holy. I'm not holy. I'll tell you. <laughs> eh? Your pastor is so holy, very holy. So he can't talk all this type of thing. That's why God brought me to Facebook. He said, tell them. You see, poor people will leave. Pretenders are the ones leaving, or they are the ones smelling. <laughs> they will be leaving the platform. What is he saying? He's talking nonsense. He just, he just, go because you are the ones smelling. So you want to take lesson. You're angry because I talked to your situation. Huh? As a woman, men don't smell easily. But as a woman, you smell easily. Clean up. Clean up. Hmm? Some of you cannot go to to the swimming pool with bikini. You know why? You don't have good body. Be clean. Black black spot everywhere. Black spot everywhere. Black spot every. The black spot is everywhere. On your period of your pride, black spot everywhere. That's nonsense. That's why God said, 
is a sin, sex before marriage. Because these are the things the man will see and say they will not do again. But if he still marries you and still sees those things, he will not start cheating and say, I can't make love to my wife. She's mine. And it is shameful to say that. It is shameful to have said that. You will learn your lesson. The high time you know is better for you than Nigeria is not for you. Be clean. Every day you are calling witchcraft. It's my uncle people. It's my uncle people. It's my uncle people that don't want me to marry. It's a lie. You are a smelling woman. Very smelling. Clean up. Stop wearing one pant for a full year. Have set of pants. Change them. I hear what I'm saying? Don't let familiarity between you and your husband. You wear one pant. You have that pant since two years. Throw it away. Don't give somebody your pants to start wearing. No, burn. After burn it fire. Have routine. In one month before you will wear that set again, you will wear it in the next two months to three months. Hmm? The money you will use in buy leggings for this Christmas, use it to buy more pants. But just buy different set. Buy. And the best pant to buy is cotton pant. I was a bad boy for me to come teach you, all you good people. So if it's hair fire, it's okay. I will go. You go. Let me see you heaven. Because if you say I'm going to hell fire and I don't see you in heaven, I now see you in the hell fire you are claiming that I will be, I will kill you there. <laughs> I hear what I'm saying? So I decided to be a bad boy today to teach you so that your relationship in your marriage will last. Are you hearing me? Be clean. Don't wear Gucci. Everywhere is shining. The moment you remove your trouser, everybody will know you are seeing your messes. That's. I should teach you. <laughs> I'm not a woman, but I know so much. My mother taught me. Listen, in 2005, some of you have not started baiting in the bathroom. You are baiting outside. I was very young. I used to take 5,000 naira for classes, how to keep yourself clean. People paid. But these days, they will say they know they don't know anything. Eh? Change your own this. Use one set for one month. Get 31 panties. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Stop soaking your pants. Stop soaking your undies. Put it in the water and soak it. Stop. If it's dirty, wash it. Wash it. Wash it. Don't soak it. If you soak it, it's an infection. Don't soak it. The moment you finish, you wash it in the bathroom. Squeeze it. Do not put your panties on that sun for the sun to touch it. It's infection. It will get infection. Because outside is full of dust, infection everywhere. So put it in a cool place. Let it dry in that cool place. Not in the sun. Put it in that place. Let it cool. Let the atmosphere in the room dry it not the sun it will give it infection when you put it please don't iron your own this it will also give you infection <laughs> just leave it fold it pack it and keep that's for 31 days bring out another 31 days out you wear it for another 31 days that's second month you bring out another set which is the third set. You must have three sets of panties, 31. The third set out and start wearing it. 
So before you go back to the first one you use, it will take up to three months. The space would have been long. That calmness would have been there before you will wear it again. It will now look like a new one. Don't even use dryer for panties. It will give you infection. <laughs> huh? I'll teach you. <laughs> huh? I'll do what? I'm tired of this unnecessary divorce. Your husband is cheating. He's be quiet. That's it. He will tell you. That's why. <laughs> eh? He will tell you. If you go to those classes, they collect 20000 for this lecture. But I'm giving you free. But of God. Say, this guy, man, he's very raw. This guy, now, bad guy. How can carry all these things? I learned it. And I have a mother who taught me. <laughs> I'm a very clean guy. But I'm lazy. It's over two years I wash my clothes. Laundry does it for me. Are you understanding? Okay, keep your prayer. Can you pray for who? He just come and made them pray for you. Your own problem. Then big pass our own. So learn. Hmm? We are. Hmm? Learn. If you are wearing trousers, Never you wear a leather panties. If you're wearing a trouser, wear cotton pants. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Buy more of cotton pants so that you will have fresh air. Because air matters a lot. <laughs> that is very important. Make your hair. If you cannot make it, wash it. Wash your hair. If you cannot plate it, always wash it. It's very important. This is your armpit listing. Every woman must have what they call lime. 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 Do you know what they call lime? If you are baiting, after or before baiting, you call lime. Start using lime on your... Eh? You start using lime. Lace, no. I cotton pant is the best. You start using lime. Wash your armpits very well with lime. Don't use sponge. Sponge does not clean your armpit. <laughs> it is lime that cleans your armpit. Sponge does not even clean the body. It is ordinary soap that cleans your body. So carrying sponge is to touch where your hands cannot touch but the rest is hand or that small um, hand glove don't scrub your body rub your body after you use that one you now use hand the same way you you wash plates and when you touch it it's very some part is dry and so that's how you know your body is clean so after you use that soft stuff, use it. Women, take your time in the bathroom. Stop rushing there. After you clean it, remove it. Use your hand now to clean it again. But use lime. Always wash your armpit two times in a week. Two times in a week. Wash it. Wash it. Squeeze it for the water to come out. Wash it. Wash it. Then before you use soup and water to wash it. Because even the show, eh, the durant you're using is also chemical. You understand? If it accumulates, the day you stop using it, you will start smelling. So lime cures body odor. Quick, you see, you just wear clothes, small heats everywhere. You started no. Lime cures it. So always shave, scrub it two times a week. Then, huh? and some of you ladies who are experiencing infection, huh? some of you who are experiencing infection, there are other um, 
exactly. You can use it. Some of you who have infection down there as a woman, if you're in the bathroom, try to use your hand and check yourself if you are smelling. Hmm? You as a woman, you should know your particular odor. How do you use that one too? You don't use soap. Uh -huh. I will teach you, it's free. Use water. Put it in a small bucket or a custard bucket or whatever small bucket it is. Huh? Put hot water inside. Of course, to be perfectly clean is not easy. Are you understanding me? That's how to cure infection. You put it, you put hot water, you put what they call Dito inside. You put enough Dito, not small, put enough Dito. You turn it, sit on it. The heat that is coming will be able to heat the entrance area and it's going to make. I'm not going to say this, but it's, it's free, of course. Do you know I can finish teaching you and tell you what God said? Because He's telling He's reminding me. <laughs> God is reminding me now. You people are so holy. They said the Bible said, I will, He can teach us all things. All, not some, all. He can teach us all things. So the Holy Spirit is reminding me some. <laughs> so you sit on that bucket. The heat that comes out heals that part. And mostly some of you who have given birth before, you know, it looks somehow, if I say this, but I'm saying it because of teachings. Your, there is a name they call it, so I'm not going to call it so that it doesn't look somehow. You know, that part, the front stage is so that it doesn't, when it start falling apart, if you're always using hot water, sitting on a hot bucket, bringing out smoke, you know, if you boil a flesh, the flesh comes, starts swelling up. Is that not true? Yeah. So this one, you're not boiling it. It's the heat that comes out that makes it thickened. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It brings out the flesh. It doesn't let it fall. So the flesh rises up and goes back to its settings after childbirth, mainly. You understand? It goes back inside and it still looks like a baby's own. You understand? And that thing also helps your inner flesh to start getting boiled, to full up so that you can come to what I call closure. It doesn't have to run free will because you have given birth. It comes back to closure. That's the natural closure. And after birth also, do not sit in the couch. Always sit on top of blocks or wood something that have no foam no nothing sit on those stuffs don't sit on the couch because you're not going to have a closure so the best closure is to sit on the block on the wall or whatever chair it is it just sits not the one that comes with foam it's going to go back to closure are you understanding me don't believe in all those um, chemical closure that causes what we call um irritational um um pack that could also cause infection are you understanding what i'm saying so don't do that after childbirth go sit in iron chairs wood blocks do not sit on the couch are you understanding what i'm saying and after bed try to be taking more of lifting so that lifting will start killing the stomach fat so that you start having flat stomach and the moment you give birth try to be using what to call rub you know rub this hot bam you 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 keep rubbing bam because the bam will make your stomach to be hot then it start folding the skin again it start folding the skin it will start folding the the hot bam will start folding the skin it becomes normal yeah but americans will not tell you because they have a separate name for it so you just start putting hot balm on your stomach, it closes it back, it brings it down, it closes it back. So not many people don't know, they say it's for free, you see, it closes it down and all that, while you're also wearing your belt, 
to bring it down. Then if you have true CS, you don't have to put on hot pan. If you have true CS, try to use hot water to be touching it yourself every morning. Round it and be drinking warm water. Warm water, steady morning, afternoon, because cold water makes stomachs to be big, if you don't know. Yeah. Even in the afternoon, you're a man, cold water makes your stomach to be big. So you start taking warm water. If you have big stomach, start taking warm water. The warm water will shrimp that part. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's how it works. So it reduces it and, and makes it better. You understand? So you put it, your stomach gets back to normal and all that. Your husband married you because you have flat stomach and you just gave birth and you are allowing yourself to have big stomach. No. So that is what you should do. That's that part. You understand? So I'm still going back to that place where you sit on that bucket. It takes your private part. It fools it back. It makes it, uh, it, makes it come back to the research room. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So you see your, your private area and inside becomes a closure. And you are ready to catch fun again. You're like, wow, honey, you are elastic. That's how elastic is. When you're talking about elastic body, it works with hot water. Those women don't joke with hot water. It's elastic body. So after that time, you stop using the hot water and start beating cold water. Because if you overuse the hot water, it will not make it slack. So you now go back to cold water to make it strong. After making it soft and getting it fat back, you start using cold water. Like the iron that just comes from the fire, you now use water to cool it. It will not be the way you kept it. So after that process, you now start using cold water to bait there. And it will remain the way you want it. That's the normal process. And that's it. So that heat brings out those dirty things. And you always use in sata every time you are done with your measure flow. Women always use in sata to fight because after your blood there are still blood there you always use insata to also kill the infection inside are you understanding what i'm saying so after your measure flow you are ought to also take what we call flagyl for flagyl to cleanse your stomach or you look for any kind of multivitamin herbal uh, cleanser it will clean your stomach so you have a clean body for yourself. So that's all you have to know for now. Okay, let's go with the people that have the question. Do we have any question? I have a lot to talk about. You have you have a question? What am I, Deputy Jesus? Come and ask question. Okay, more grace. We are learning. You have any question? Question. 
Okay, somebody from uh, Roman said, I have learned so much from you, sir. Thanks a lot. Okay, glory to God. My question is, how to make your husband love you and never want to leave you? Okay, I want to make my husband love me. Um, you want to make your husband love you? Um, okay, I just heard from God. If you want to make your spouse love you, there are things that you should be stupid about, not to be wise about. There are things you should be stupid about that will make him love you. And there are things you should be wise about that's going to make you. Now, can I give you tips? I will give you tips. If you want your husband to love you, there is nothing like disobedience in your spirit. He's going to love you. There's nothing like resistance in your spirit. He's going to love you. That's one. Then the other side that will also make him love you is that you do booking for him with boat. He's at the office. Honey, you've closed. It's okay. There is a boat guy waiting for you. Hi, honey, you did boat. I just closed. He gets into the boat. He comes back home. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Those are the things to do. If it's not, make sure you do everything for him that he does less for himself. Then the moment you own his responsibility, he will love you and he will never want to take you for granted. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You own the responsibilities of your husband. He will love you. The responsibility I'm talking about is not money. you. <laughs> In the place of the suit he will wear, the clothes he will wear the next day, the shoe he will wear the next day, the clothes he will wear on Sunday. Are you understanding what I'm saying? These are the things that can make him. Can you book a flight for your husband? Learn it. He won't. He doesn't need any other agent. He will use you. Honey, are you there? Okay, I am booking this one for you i'm not paying for it but i'm just doing the booking for three days in case of the meeting extended for three days i'll make it for the fourth day are you booking for him he will depend on you you're going to, he's going to church you brought out the clothes he will wear he will depend on you the moment your husband depends on you on his daily activities the love is sure uh -huh. it's not sex now it is those those things that look stupid and those things that are wise. So how do you know if a man loves you as a woman? He depends on you. He cannot do anything without telling you. That's how you know he loves you. The moment he falls back to you, that's how you know. He said, what about hemorrhoid? How do you heal hemorrhoid? Is that pie? Is hemorrhoid pie? Is that pie? If it's pie, the first medicine you would take, if it's pie, which is called a hemorrhoid, the first medicine you would take, according to what my dad has, the first thing you would do, there's a, there's, yeah, there is a drug called flagyl. You are going to take flagyl, 400 milligram, two in the morning, and two in the afternoon 
and two in the night, six, six hours. Then if you're taking that flagell and if you're suffering from hemorrhoid, you will stop eating gari eba. You will, if you must eat gari, they must, it must be filtered. You will stop eating some certain food which I will search for. Then when you stop eating those you take that flagell. You take the flagell for seven days. You will see the difference. Then that's the first stage. Then you will now go for what we call the second stage. That's when you will now come to my inbox. <laughs> I will not tell you. Hemorrhoid is not... My father used to say, the greatest sickness in life is not cured by expensive drugs. They are cheap drugs that can cure you naturally without expensive drugs. So when you that, you come. Hmm? That's bleeding, not pie. It's the same thing, that's what I'm saying. It's the same thing, it stops it. Mm -hmm. So that's the first stage. When it comes to the second stage, you now call me privately, then I will tell you. So that's it. Okay, thank you so much. Diet. Avoid stress and obey your bowels. How do we cure high sugar level? To cure a high sugar level is not a medical thing. It's um, it's more like a native medicine. It's a native medicine. I think it's finished. Uh, I will show you when I buy it. It's a native medicine. Medical drugs does not cure high sugar level. Diabetes. It's native medicine that will put it under control. High sugar level, yeah. It's a native medicine. But the local one you can do is to squeeze out bitter leaf. Bitter leaf and you put it little honey. And you drink it for 20 days. Huh? 20 days straight. Little honey inside bitter leaf water. And do the one for 20 days. You will see it. How to get rid of asthma difficulties in breathing that difficulties in breathing asthma is that you have to also believe in the healing of god yeah because asthma is not just natural hmm? i understand what i'm saying asthma is not just natural it's a supernatural illness that needs a supernatural medicine to cure asthma. But that asthma one is that I think you should always be where there is a lot of fresh air. It just goes on its own when you learn to relax and sleep well. Asthma goes by you sleeping very well. Hmm? So that's it. Asthma goes with when you sleep very well. Yeah, the moment you wake up, you take a lot of warm water. And can I tell you something? Do you know Ampeslin? Ampeslin helps to reduce that asthma thing, but it looks like it cannot work. Ampeslin does that. Just 250 milligrams. That's how you have to leave. Okay. I said, you have been so helpful, sir. Well, what can I do for watery spam? How can I get a tick spam? Uh, you uh... okay to get a tick spam is first of all working on your cashew, working on your potassium, and also working with your protein. But I will tell you a remedy. The first remedy you should take is what I call cashew nuts. Does that and. Um, also what they call you know what they call tiger knot tiger knot also helps hmm? tiger knot also help sickle cell patients are hardly cured medically it's native
Uh, marijuana helps to work out asthma, but if you don't use it very well, it will cause you a mental problem. Thyroid. What is thyroid? Thyroid is bicham. You can take like ampiclos. It's particularly called bicham for thyroid. Hmm? And if, if ampiclos, bicham is not working for the thyroid, then you will now go to what we call Ghana seed. Ghana seed. You know what they call Ghana seed? Okay, Ghana seed is like Ghana seed. You know it's very tiny. You are going to buy what they call, you will cut the Ghana seed and twist it. You put the Ghana seed inside bottle. Then you now put soda water, soda drink, eh? soda. You now pour soda inside the Ghana seed. It's called Ghana seed. Go to the market, look for it, and you pour soda inside. You now pour soda inside and leave it for like six hours and shake that Ghana seed and drink. That Ghana seed helps for infection, helps kill so many things and all that. So that's it. It's a bitter leaf, not bitter leaf. It's a vegetable, but bitter. You wash and squeeze the water until it becomes lighter in bitter, whatever you want. Uh, somebody said, how many minutes is sex? Sex should last. I don't know. Sex does not have um, a time of satisfaction. Two minutes can be a sex can be satisfying when you know how your woman comes. Five minutes can be satisfying when you know what to do for your woman to come. And for you to come as a woman, it has to do with compassion. Yeah, compassion makes it come easily. Yeah, that's one of the things. In my country, they use tomato leaves, squeeze a bit. Okay. What's the secret to get flat tummy? The secret to get flat tummy is you eat early. The moment it's more than 6 p.m., do not eat again. And start taking a lot of water. Take a lot of water. And the moment it's 6, don't eat. So what of blood pressure? I've said it about blood pressure. So that's it. So... So that's it. Any other?